I Believe community. My name is Jolene Underwood. I'm an emotional health coach. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about empathy. Empathy is something that I feel like we need more than ever in this world right now. I don't know about you, but I am... I get worn out um, watching different opinions online and just seeing the divisiveness and how strong some of the opinions can be, whatever the topic is. And we have plenty of topics to choose from right now. But as believers, we're called to unity in some way, right? How can we find a way to get connected with one another? And how much do we need that connection when we've been dealing with pandemic issues, whether that means that we're home a lot or um, and missing connections with friends or we're actually working even more. At the end of the day, a lot of us are really struggling with um, the changes in our lives and experiencing a lack of empathy for one another. So what does empathy do for us? Empathy is a way of actually bringing unity within the body of the Christ because God has designed each one of us to be um, to want to be seen and known and loved. And ultimately, that comes from God, right? He is the one who sees us fully. He knows us fully. He loves us completely. And he works through other people. One of the ways that we experience empathy, this level of being seen and known and loved, um, is through other people. We get to experience what God has for us by working through his people. We crave it, we need it, um, we need to receive it, and we need to give it. Um, so our systems are just really taxed with the divisiveness, with the, um, um, just, it's kind of like a collective trauma that we're experiencing around the world. Things have changed so much. And it's easy to get kind of into this silo thinking of either what I understand is right, because we want to find some way of kind of controlling all the uncontrollable things that are happening around us, right? But what if we took some deep breaths and we say, God, ultimately, we have to trust you. We don't have control over all of these things. There are areas that we're just not going to be able to control. But there are some things that we really need and we can do, choices that we can make, and that is in giving empathy to other people and then maybe even recognizing that we need that empathy for ourselves. What does it look like? And maybe even asking for it from a friend or a family member. Uh, it maybe feel a little weird, but um, I've got a little more comfortable with just letting people know, you know what, right now I'm just feeling really sad and I need someone to listen to me. Um, I'm feeling angry and I need a chance to just kind of express what I'm you know, upset about, but then I feel better. I, I It's not something I need to hold on to. I just... I need to work it out a little bit. And sometimes I need to work it out verbally and having someone listen and just be able to uh, not judge me in that moment, but to see that an injustice happened or um, even if it's my wrong expectation, I get a chance to kind of process that and just experience God's presence in those moments. So um, I wanted to share three tips today that we that can help us to cultivate empathy with other people. And the first one is that you need to know your own feelings. You need to be able to name and identify the feelings that you have so that you can speak and reveal them to others, which in a way can also model to friends what you need from them. But you can lead this way by expressing some of your feelings, even if it's just to yourself, by practicing the um, identification and the um, naming of it. Man, I, like I said before, I am feeling angry. I'm confused. I, I'm, I'm not sure about this. It doesn't mean that that's where we're always going to be. It's just, it's a way of processing what's happening, what's already internally uh, within us so that um, we can actually have a chance to share it with someone else. But if we don't even know what's going on inside of us, how can we connect to another person um, and even connect to them where they're at if we don't even know, like, man, I've been shoving this all down. I actually have some losses to grieve, and I've been really focused on trying to stay positive and being really grateful, which are all great things, but I also haven't allowed the, the negative thing to actually work its way through, to feel the sadness or the anger that comes with it. So identify that. The first step is to know your own feelings. 
Number two is to know what's yours, but not yours. So when we're with other people, um, it can be one of the challenges to being able to be empathic and to be able to be present with those uh, with other people is that we want to jump in with a quick fix answer. We want to um, have them see things our way or do things our way or hear our thoughts and um, think, wow, this is a great thing. But what's happening there is we're actually trying to put what's ours onto them rather than recognizing what is theirs. So meaning, what are their thoughts? What is their process? What is their motivation? What are what feelings are theirs? Not that we have to know what all of those are, but to simply recognize that where we are and where we stop and where another person is and that it is different than ours because we can't engage empathically understanding with being with the person where they are unless we understand that it's different. And the reason I kind of point this out is because we may kind of think well, yeah, duh, it makes sense that they're another person, but what we actually do in practicality, because we feel anxious inside of ourselves, is try to give all the advice or um, try to navigate a uh, conversation so that they um, see the things that you want them to see and trying to make it happen for them in some way. So just kind of be mindful of that and identifying things that are you know, going on with them and then what's going on with you. Which brings you to step number three, which is listen to understand. Listening to understand, it kind of ties into a video that I did previously on validation. So if you haven't watched that one, you can go back to the videos tab in the I Believe community on Facebook. And um, it's called validation. And it talks about how we are able to actually receive our the validation for our identity in Christ as we are validated in our experiences by other people. So what do I mean? In listening to understand, we are listening to understand where they're coming from, what their thoughts are, and what those feelings are. So first we know that we're starting to identify what's ours and not ours, and what's theirs and not theirs, but then really trying to understand where are they coming from. So they're saying some different things. And if somebody is starting to express some doubts or some anger, I think as believers, one of the things that we can do that cuts empathy off at the door is, oh, you, you shouldn't feel anger. Anger is a sin or um, our, you know, don't feel the doubts because God is there. And we feel like we have to fix their faith. And that's not empathy. Um, God's a big God. Holy Spirit's a big spirit. And one of the most powerful things to do is to really listen for where they're at and let them share and explain and process kind of the hurt or the pain or whatever it is that they're going through. And in that, um, that presence, you're, you're giving them a gift, an opportunity to experience God, God's presence with them kind of through you. Um, because he uses us to be, um, you know, flesh representations and obviously very, very imperfectly, but we're not there as God or to be God's replacement and the Holy Spirit's replacement to fix, we're there to listen. There are times to speak truth, and that's another topic, but right now we're focusing on three ways that we can cultivate empathy, especially in connection with other people. So number one, name and identify your own feelings. You can do it just for yourself. You can write them down. You can use a tool that I I have called Unleash Heart and Soul Care Sheets that will help you um, probably realize that you have more feelings than you thought. or thoughts than you thought, and actually engage with God in those. So know your own feelings, number one. Number one. Number two, know what's yours and not yours with your thoughts, your feelings, your motivations. It's You're not trying to make it happen for the other person. And number three, listen to understand. I hope those tips are helpful, and I look forward to catching you guys again in this community, and I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, and I'm going to share an article that I wrote for Crosswalk on five reasons that we need empathy now more than ever. I hope you guys will take a chance to read it. I hope it's helpful and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.